Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. Today is Sunday, June the 5th, 2022, and welcome to day two of my Grand River solo canoeing adventure. So the time is currently 6 a.m. and I spent the evening camped here at this campground known as the West Montrose Family Camp, which is just a little bit upstream of the West Montrose Covered Bridge. And of course it's situated right here next to the Grand River. It ended up getting quite chilly last night, but I managed to stay warm inside of my sleeping bag. My plan for this morning is to get everything packed up and loaded into the canoe so I can get back on the river and head further downstream with the goal of getting as far as Kitchener today. So the time is now 7 a.m. and just as if I was never there, my campsite is all packed up and I've got the canoe loaded up with my stuff. It's still a relatively chilly 8 degrees Celsius right now, but the sun is shining and the sky is blue, so things should warm up relatively soon, although it isn't expected to stay sunny all day. In fact, there's an 80% chance of rain later this afternoon. All right, so here I am in the river and beginning day two of paddling on the Grand. And coming into view up ahead is the West Montrose Covered Bridge, which I walked across yesterday, but now I get to paddle underneath of it. Originally constructed in 1881, it's definitely a unique piece of infrastructure. So as you can see, the structure of this bridge still is made almost entirely out of wood, although they have added some metal reinforcements here and there over the years. Next to the river, I've got some nice scenery of some farmer's fields with rolling hills. So far, it's just an absolutely beautiful morning out here on the river. That right there is the third raccoon that I've seen this morning, spending some time in the river, I guess, getting a morning drink. Definitely not as fat as the raccoons that I see in the city. Up ahead in the distance, I can see another bridge coming into view. Over here on the right, I can see a tributary of the Grand River, a creek that flows in here and joins the stream of water that flows down to Lake Erie. So this bridge here, which is up ahead, is called the Buggy Lane Bridge. And unlike a lot of the other historic bridges on the river, this one doesn't have a lot of information available online. And it's been speculated that this bridge actually doesn't belong to any government body. It's actually owned and maintained by the Mennonites who live in the local community. And it looks like a very old bridge, but what I was reading said that likely a lot of the materials from this bridge were salvaged from you know, other buildings or old bridges to be able to form this one. One way that you can tell that it's not particularly old are because a lot of the members of the bridge are welded together, where if, if it was, you know, 80 or 90 years old, everything would have had to have been riveted or bolted together. But even though it's not necessarily particularly old, it's definitely a unique bridge. See another field over there with some nice straight crop rows as I continue my way down the river. Up ahead, I can see another historic bridge coming into view. This bridge is called the Winterbourne Bridge, which has the same name as the community, which is located just a short distance up the road from it. So the Winterbourne Bridge was built back in 1913. And at the moment, the bridge is actually closed, but unlike that bridge that I saw yesterday, which was closed and slated for demolition, this bridge has actually been approved for rehabilitation. So in the future, it should reopen and people should be able to use it again. This design of bridge is known as a pin-connected camelback through truss bridge. The time is now just after 8 o'clock and I paddled more than 5 kilometers and this morning really couldn't be any more perfect. So up ahead here there's a small island where the river splits into two and I'll be paddling on this path on the right side of it. Prior to this trip I spent some time preparing a map for the trip which I've loaded into my GPS and any time when there was multiple branches to choose from, I did my best to try to analyze the satellite photography to try and figure out which of the two branches seemed to be deeper. And so far it seems like I made the right choice for this particular branch. So I've now paddled about six and a half kilometers and I'm starting to get hungry, so my plan is to pull the canoe over that way into the shade so I can stop and have some breakfast. So for my breakfast today, I'll be enjoying the campsite overnight oats that I prepared for myself last night with some orange juice to drink. And while I'm stopped here, I'll also take this opportunity to put on some sunscreen because so far it's been quite a sunny day. Feeling refueled and energized, I'm now back on the water and ready to keep on paddling. So over on the left side of the river here is the Conestoga Golf Club, and I can see some golfers teeing off there. Up ahead here, there's a portion of the golf course which exists over on the other side of the river, and that's the first of two bridges that connect the two sides together. There's a closer look at that bridge. As far as I know, it's only designed for pedestrians and golf carts. And you can see a family of Canada geese walking down the side of the bank there. Those young goslings are getting pretty big already. 
compared to this family of geese over here where the young are much smaller. And up ahead there I can see the second of the two bridges coming into view. Looks like it's of the same design as the first one. Just beyond the second golf course bridge, there's a road bridge for Sawmill Road, which over to the right leads into the community of Conestogo. And heading across the Sawmill Road bridge, I can see a horse and buggy from some local Mennonites heading to Conestogo. And also noticing this old foundation here in the side of the river, which presumably was for the bridge that was the predecessor of the current bridge. Perched on that branch there, I can see a great blue heron that's just gotten up to fly. So over here to my right is the mouth of the Conestogo River, which is a river that has an artificial lake that feeds it. And I spent an evening camp there a couple of years ago. Up ahead there on the right, I can see a deer standing within the side of the river. There she goes. Me and the deer are having a staring contest with each other. So I began my day today within the township known as Woolwich Township. And believe it or not, I've actually now crossed into the city limits of the city of Waterloo. Well, technically this side of the river is still Woolwich Township, but the side over on my right is the city of Waterloo and the river here forms the boundary between the two. Waterloo, Ontario has a current population of approximately 120,000 and it's home to both the University of Waterloo and Wilfrid Laurier University. While the Grand River has a lot of historical and cultural significance to Kitchener and Waterloo, the central downtowns of these two cities were actually built a fair distance away from the river. So while I won't be visiting the downtown or uptown of Kitchener-Waterloo on this trip, I posted a series of videos last fall where I explored the Twin Cities on my bicycle. Just noticing on the side of the river here, these small things swimming in the river. Pretty sure those are tadpoles, which will eventually grow up and lose their tails and turn into frogs. In fact, you can see a whole bunch of the tadpoles over there. So the time is now 10 o'clock and I paddled about 12 and a half kilometers. And over here on my right, I'm paddling past another golf course. And there's also a recreational trail, which follows along the side of this river, which I rode my bike on way back when I was a student. Up ahead, I can see a large house. It was built next to the river. You can see an animal up there swimming in the water. I think it's probably a beaver. I've really been enjoying the paddling so far today. The water in this section seems to be a lot deeper than where I was paddling yesterday. I have had to get out of the canoe a couple of times to walk, but I'd say it's maybe 20% of the amount that I had to walk yesterday. So the paddling has just been a lot more steady. I've been able to just sort of get comfortable and just, you know, paddle right on through. Up ahead there, I can see a guy with a kayak who looks like he's either launching or taking out after some time paddling on the river. While the Grand River is a pretty common place for people to go paddling, I'm discovering that you don't really tend to see a lot of other paddlers on the river while you're paddling. And the reason for that is because with the current, everyone pretty much is always paddling in the same direction as you. So unless either you or they are going significantly faster than the other, then you're not really gonna be passing each other and you really only see each other, you know, when someone has stopped. Up ahead there in the sky, I can see some buzzards circling. Buzzards are also known as turkey vultures. So up ahead here, I'm just about to enter the city limits of Kitchener after spending a very short time in Waterloo. But just like before, the left-hand side of the river is still within the township of Woolwich. Well, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. This river here is just an absolutely beautiful place to be spending my time today. This portion of the river also has a trail going along beside it, which obviously these people have been making use of. So I'm starting to see signs of things that look a little bit more like a city. So I'm now paddling along a section of the river, which is Kitchener on both sides of the river. And over on the left side, uh, there's a community which is part of Kitchener called Bridgeport. And coming into view up ahead is the historic Bridgeport Bridge. So this bridge dates back to 1934, and the style of bridge is called a concrete bowstring through arch bridge, but it's also nicknamed a rainbow arch bridge. So the time is now 12 noon, and I paddled about 22 and a half kilometers. So I'm getting really close to my destination, but I've decided that I'm gonna stop here and lock up the canoe so that I can walk into the community of Bridgeport and hopefully find something that I can eat for lunch. 
So I've walked up to the top of the bridge and now I'll make my way along this road into the community of Bridgeport. So as far as I can tell, Bridgeport doesn't really have a downtown area, but there is a plaza over here which includes a pizza restaurant. So the restaurant's called Twice the Deal. So I've got my pizza here and now I'm making my way back to where I parked the canoe under the bridge. So I decided to get one slice of meat lovers and one slice of Hawaiian, as well as a bottle of pop, and all that was only $5. So that seems like a pretty good deal, and the pizza's pretty good too. So after that enjoyable lunch break, I've now got myself back into the canoe and ready to keep on paddling a few more kilometers until I get to my destination. There now seem to be quite a few more clouds in the sky than there were earlier, and it's starting to feel like it might start raining, but not yet at least. Looking back at the bridge, I can see some kayakers that are heading towards me. Despite the fact that I'm now paddling through a city, the river still seems to be very natural and undisturbed. There's even a great blue heron here who calls this portion of the river its home. I think that bird on the rock there is a vulture. So I had a chance to speak to these guys in the kayaks and they told me that they rented their kayaks from a company and they got dropped off somewhere and they're paddling 20 kilometers downstream to where they'll get picked up again. And over on the other side of the river, I can see two people sitting on top of paddle boards who are paddling upstream right now, which I guess is relatively feasible here because it doesn't seem to be an awful lot of current. And over on the right, I'm pretty well, I think I've reached my campground. So the campground where I'm staying tonight is called Bingaman's and similar to the place where I was camping last night, it's a campground that has a combination of seasonal campsites, like these ones that you can see here, as well as nightly campsites, where I'm going to be staying. So the time is now 1.15, and check-in time isn't actually until 2 p.m., but I actually already have a reservation for tonight, so as long as there wasn't somebody camping on my site last night who hasn't left yet, I think I shouldn't have too much problem proceeding directly to my campsite. All right, so if my estimations are correct, I think my campsite should be just up ahead on the right side. So the campsite which I reserved is just up here at the top of that hill, and I only overshot it with the canoe by a little bit. So from down there at the riverbank, I've now moved the canoe up here, along with all my stuff. And this here is where I'll be camping tonight, campsite number 608. Although most of the other campsites in this area seem to be unoccupied right now, which is not particularly surprising considering this is going to be a Sunday night that I'll be camping and this is in the month of June, so school children are still going to school right now, so not a whole lot of camping goes on, which from my perspective makes this a great time for me to do a trip like this. Back out there on the river I can see some canoeists paddling past. All right, so the time is now 2.15, and as you can see, I've got the tent set up, and I think now I'm just going to go for a little bit of a walk to explore the park, and also at some point I'll probably visit the park office to let them know that I'm here so that I can officially check into my site. So I managed to find the bathroom building, which is located quite conveniently close to where I'm camping. In addition to the many campsites, this park also has some roofed accommodations, which include these structures here, which are called container cabins which are constructed using old shipping containers. Inside the cabin, I can see some bunk beds. There's also a mini fridge over there. So I've stayed at many campgrounds over the years, but this is the first one that I've ever camped at that has its own water park. Though as you may expect, given the time of year, the water park isn't open now. They do have mini putt though, which is currently open. So this park also has a convention center, and based on some of the vehicles that are parked here today, I'm guessing that there's a convention going on that has something to do with pets. And here I found my way over to one of the seasonal camping areas, the one that I already paddled past earlier. Well, I haven't found the park office yet, but I did find a section of the park which has some cabins. And up at the top of the hill, there's another section of the park which has seasonal camping. Well, this certainly is a big park, but after a fair bit of walking, I've managed to find the campground registration office. Well, I made it back to my campsite and it's still pretty early in the afternoon, not nearly time for dinner, so I guess I'll just lie down and relax a little bit in the tent. So the time is now about 5.30, and I think I'll go for a walk and find something to have for dinner. So just at the very edge of the park, there's a bowling alley, which also has a restaurant inside of it. So the restaurant that they have here is Boston Pizza, and you might be thinking, didn't you just have pizza for lunch? Well, the good news is that Boston Pizza serves more than just pizza. All right, so I'm inside the restaurant and they've given me a table and I've already made my order. And tonight for dinner, I'm gonna be eating something called the jambalaya fettuccine with some water to drink.
So that was an enjoyable meal. Now I'm gonna walk back to my campsite and on the way there, I'm going to stop at the bathroom building and have a shower for the evening. So as I'm walking back, I can feel that it's just starting to spit and there is a 30% chance of rain overnight. So I guess it is gonna rain after all. So here I've arrived at the shower building. Hmm, I guess you have to hold the button down while you shower. All right, so I made it back to the campsite and there's a little bit of rain coming down, but it's still very light. I think I'll now open up my food barrel and I'll eat up some of those leftover desserts that I had last night. But before I call it a night, I just wanted to sign off for day two of this adventure. So my total paddling distance today was about 26.5 kilometers. And I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed the paddling today. Uh, and I'd say I enjoyed it quite a bit more than yesterday, uh, solely based on the fact that the water was quite a bit deeper for most of the time. I think I said, you know, towards the beginning of the day that maybe the amount of times I had to get out was, you know, maybe about 20% uh, compared to yesterday. But uh, as I went further down the river, it just got deeper and wider. And, uh, you know, I would say for the total of the day, it was probably more like 10% uh, compared to yesterday. So uh, yeah, very nice to be paddling in deep water because you can just sort of, you know, get a rhythm going and just sort of paddle and not really have to worry too much about, you know, getting in and out of the canoe. And, uh, you know, you can just, yeah, get comfortable and, and keep on going. Um, but yeah, it was, it worked out, things worked out really well with the lunch stop being, you know, right in Bridgeport. I had kind of anticipated that that might be a place where I would stop, but just, just arriving there right at noon, uh, I just made it perfect because I was hungry and it was right there and it was just a short walk away and uh, that worked out really well. And uh, so looking forward to tomorrow uh, where I'll be paddling even further. I think my distance will be around 33 kilometers and I also will have two portages along the way. Uh, so looking forward to that uh, as I continue my way, you know, through Kitchener and I'll be entering into uh, Cambridge and my plan is to camp just on the outskirts uh, of Cambridge. But anyway, thanks for joining me on day two of my Grand River solo canoeing adventure. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.